Welcome back to the Chosen Ministries podcast. We are your hosts, Sydney Kell. And Tony Kell. And we are in our brand new series, Groundwork for Growth. This is episode two, and this episode is all about the renewal of your mind and what that means, what it looks like as a believer, and the importance. So this is really, really huge. It's a big principle of being a Christian and walking this life with the Lord. Um, The first episode, if you did not listen to it, make sure you listen to it because it is all about getting in the Word, knowing the Word of God. So this is definitely like the sequel to that first episode that is kind of like the groundwork setting it up for this episode um but renewing your mind with the word of god is totally going to change your life here on earth especially if you are getting um just attacked mentally yes um so this is huge if you are feeling like you are struggling with like anxious thoughts or depression or just being overwhelmed ocd all of the things this is something so big for believers to be taking in the word of god and applying it to our lives renewing our mind from just the lies that the enemy has told us and basically living victoriously yeah like even if you just feel like you're living defeated day to day like renewing of the mind is like so powerful and like sid mentioned the first episode was definitely i feel like more of like like almost like like how do we know the bible is true you know like like so it was like the groundwork of like the bible being the word of god uh the bible being like truth and Mm -hmm. how can we trust it i feel like that was like the first episode yeah now this one although we touched on it a little bit on the first episode is like the importance of now renewing your mind and applying it to our lives because like a lot of things you know like the enemy will throw at us and torment us with um just like you know, really honestly crippling thoughts of yeah. just fear or um, anxiety and all these things. And so when we renew our mind, we can really just like cross out the lies that the enemy has put in our heads, yeah. tormented us with and replacing it with God's truth. Yep. Um, so what what does it mean? Like this practice, this um, principle of renewing our mind? Like, what does that truly mean? Yeah, uh, it really just means like instead of going throughout the day, and listening and believing the lies of the enemy, uh, maybe something you hear, you know, through the news or a movie or whatever the case may be, instead of just allowing your thoughts just to like go rampant and think whatever you want, renewing your mind is like, okay, I'm not gonna just let my thoughts go wherever they want. It's time for me to take authority and dominion over my thoughts. And that comes by renewing your mind. Mm-hmm. And so renewing your mind is just basically replacing those negative lies those strongholds whatever the enemy is trying to torment you with and you're replacing it with truth and that comes from the word of god Mm -hmm. so that's renewing your mind is just basically take a computer for example you get a brand new computer the the hardware is perfect the screen's perfect the shell's perfect everything about that hardware is perfect but all of a sudden the software is just slowing down and you're like the software is not working what's going on well it turns out a virus infected that software and now it's running slow it has all these pop-ups it can't function right it's sluggish it's slow what's happening well the hardware is perfect so in our life our bodies are perfect our brain is perfect you know we can function our our, our movements everything's perfect hardware wise but it's the software which is the mind which is the thoughts so when it comes to a computer you have to get an antivirus plug that into the computer, wipe it clean, and now that computer can run smoothly like it was designed to do. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. The Bible, in essence, is that antivirus, and we're plugging it in, and we're getting rid of those pop-ups. We're getting rid of those viruses. We're getting rid of those lies from the enemy. So now our bodies and our hardware can Mm -hmm. now function properly because that software is lined up to how God created us yeah. to line up and live like. So. Completely. Yeah. I feel like too, something that I feel like most people we can all relate to was the cl- the global pandemic of yeah. 2020. And just like, there were so many crazy thoughts that we oh, were just yeah. getting told. Like I've never even been a person that watched the news com- really. Right. And like, I was glued to the news because I was so scared of what was going on. And like, this is not a conspiracy theory podcast, (laughs) but you know, you hear all these different thoughts and you're just getting like, honestly, like combobbled and dirtied up in your mind and spammed up. And there was a time where we were honestly really hooked in like, what's going on, what's going on and following all these like crazy theories. (sighs) And this is this. And we had to be like, okay, we have to set back. We need to clean our heads because we cannot sleep at night because Uh, we're so stressed out and we need to go back to the word of God and find our peace in him and, um, you know, all of our safety from him because we were just so scared because we were just letting so much stuff go into our minds. So like, where were you guys at? Like during 2020, like 
I feel like most people were really, really living in fear because we just didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, you know, that is like a drastic situation, but then they have the more, more common things of, um, you know, it's winter time currently and like people are getting sick and whatever else. So it's like, you hear all these things and it's scary. And so like our reality might be one thing, but we have to be seeing with our spiritual eyes and what the word of God says yeah. and transforming our minds and cleaning our minds with the truth. So um, let's look into scripture too. Like what does, what does the, the Bible say yeah. about renewing the mind. So Roman 12 two tells us to not be conformed to the patterns of this world. So basically like, don't just follow the patterns that this world suggests. So like, you know, if you're going through something like, don't, don't just like call your friend or gossip about this or, you know, whatever the world may be doing. It says to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm -hmm. So like the Bible and God has shown us the importance of getting our mind under control and aligning up with the word because that's the battleground for the enemy. If yeah. the enemy has your mind, he has your life. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's as simple as that. And that's what I had to learn going through fear and anxiety. Like I was just giving the enemy my thoughts. I was just yeah. letting my thoughts, whatever came into my mind, I believed it. And I wasn't like casting it down and replacing it with the word. And once I started realizing that and doing that, mm -hmm. the Bible trans, it says it'll transform your life if you renew your mind. Yeah. So it's just renewing your mind things strongholds begin to come down you yes know? and even like ways that it's like anxiety fear but also going into like how to deal with relationships and people because yeah. like i feel like you know a pattern of this world can be like a friend does you wrong and it's like oh well you know let's write them off yeah, like we're not forgiving that person like i'll forgive and not forget like that type yeah. of thing and that's just like that is like a culture pattern of this world but um in god's word it says like renewal of your mind and it says um then you'll be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will we want to please the lord and yeah. so like you know like culture says write them off forgive and not forget the word of god says okay we have to forgive we yeah. need to love one another and obviously there's this is not about like relationships in the way of like we need to set boundaries all along of course yeah duh but we do need to forgive people mm -hmm. i believe a lot of times too like we are like hindering ourselves from going to the next level in life because of unforgiveness oh yeah for um, sure and that's like that's just like a cultural thought and something that is a lie from the enemy and something we need to renew our mind, know the verse and know how we need to forgive people, love one another and truly, truly not only, I mean, humble ourselves, throw down the pride. And even if you're not wrong, or even if you, yeah, even if you're not wrong, just like get to that place of walking in love yeah. and even like seeing it from a different person and apologizing. Um, that way we're just not confined to what culture looks like, what the world looks like. Yeah. And we can be more um, pleasing to the Lord and walking in the way that he has designed us to walk. Uh -huh. Well, like you said, like renewing your mind, it says then you'll be able to know God's will. So it's like renewing and, and being transformed. Then you're like, you begin to see like where God wants you to be, like yeah. the calling he has on, like it's just like, this just like takes the cloudy and the fogginess of your future and your life. And it's just like, then it just like transforms you and you begin to think differently. You begin to respond differently. You be, it's just like, it just transforms every area of your life, even business. Like it says, don't conform to the patterns of this world, mm -hmm. even business wise. Like it might be tempting to be like, oh, well, this business did it this way, or this is how you're supposed to get successful. And yeah. this is how, but no, the Bible's saying like, renew your mind, be tra or be transformed by renewing your mind and don't give into that because the Lord might have a different way and then supernaturally bring you to the next yeah. level. So it's like every area of your yeah. life. Something I've been loving too studying is when it says like, you know, ask the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Um, I feel like we've been talking about that. People are like, oh, the desires of my heart. Like it's this um, vacation home or it's this, or it's yeah. this, this dream that I've had, which maybe the Lord has put some of the things in your heart for a reason. But when we are close with the Lord, um, it, he actually <laughs> transforms our, our mind and our thoughts in our heart yeah. to what his mind and his heart is his so will, like yeah. our desires will change because it's his will yeah um and you want you ultimately want god's will like little itty bitty story is like i have been making youtube videos since i was like 12 years old you know i was doing like fashion videos i don't even like fashion i don't even like makeup but i was doing these things um because that was my my desire yeah. so i was like lord why is this why am i getting 100 views like this stinks um it wasn't until i grew in my maturity with the lord um that he gave us his idea which was chosen kids yep something very random for us so different um, yep. and something i've never felt passionate to do we've never done anything with children and all of a sudden he gave us this this idea this grace to do this and then like one week of having this 
kid show. Um, he made it go viral. It's, yeah, and it's this is something now like the greatest ministry I've ever been a part of because it is his will. And that was his point. It was never my thoughts. Yeah, never it doesn't my heart. glorify us. Like if we were like you would say all the time, if, if he gave us what we desired and our platform went up, it would just be all about us. Like, oh, yeah. watch us. Watch our daily vlogs. Watch us mm -hmm. do this, which, yeah, we thought it would be glorifying to God. But like this is he's given us the desires yeah. that we've had, which was yeah. just to be YouTubers. Just to help people on social media. Yeah, yeah. And that was the goal. And it's like now it's like he gave us more than we could ever think. It was things that I've still desired, but way beyond and not the way packaged that I thought it yeah. would be. And my desires are now what his desires are. Like he's changed my heart in that way. And there's nothing else I would rather do. Yep. Like I would, I would be so mad if I had to do makeup videos and I oh, didn't even gosh, know how to do makeup. Be so, yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's just, just like being close with the Lord, knowing his word, applying it to our lives, renewing our mind, getting the junk out of like our own thoughts, our own plans and truly wanting the will of the Lord. Yeah. And like to please him will transform your entire life. Uh-huh. Yep. So we're talking about renewing your mind. How do you renew your mind? How are we changing the thoughts and the lies of the enemy? Yes, that is a good question. I think we touched on it a little bit, but 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says this. Actually, we can start with verse 3. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Yeah. We demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So yes, this, this, yeah, this verse is saying, and I mentioned this in the first podcast, that like, Paul is talking about a war, a fight. So you're like, oh, we're about to go to battle. But then he talks about the thoughts and the strongholds. So Paul is telling us that our fight is mentally. The mm -hmm. battleground is where Satan fights us. Because if he can get our thoughts, he can get our emotions, he can get our decisions, he can ultimately have our life. And in my own life, I experienced that because... I let whatever the enemy put in my mind just stay there. And I believed his lies and I had this oppression upon me. I had this depression and anxiety and fear that caused me to stay in my house because I was believing those lies and I was always anxious. I was making myself throw up. It was just a terrible time in my life. And it wasn't until I started renewing my mind that I realized, wow, the battlefield's in the, in the mind. And Paul's telling us that we have to take captive mm -hmm. every thought and then make it obedient to Christ. So he's basically saying, you've been renewing your mind because it says we have to make it obedient to Christ. So that's the part of renewing your mind. You can't make something obedient to Christ if you don't know the word or the thoughts of Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we get into the word, we're renewing our minds, but now we had to put that to action because it says we take captive every thought. So when that lie came to me that I was going to be stuck in my house forever. I was going to deal with anxiety for the rest of my life. I was going to be in fear and I would never have a future. I would have to be like, no, Satan, I cast down those thoughts in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that I am more than a conqueror, that I have the mind of Christ, that greater is he who's in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I walk by faith and not by sight. But if I didn't know the word, I can't cast down those thoughts and yeah. replace it with how God yeah. and Christ wants it to be. So the question was, how can we... Renew our mind. Is that yeah. what it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can we renew our mind? And that's how we do it. We get into the word to renew our mind and then we meditate on it and it comes into our heart. But then we're able to now take what we read and speak it and to take captive those thoughts that yeah. the enemy was trying to place and yeah. the strongholds that he was trying to keep into our mental. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it in episode one, but simply to put that in like less words yeah. is know what the lie is, what the enemy is putting in your head of what's going to happen to you and replacing it with the word of God. Yes. And yeah. it's, and it's like, it's literally like, take it like medicine. Like if you're dealing with anxiety, go to Google versus on anxiety. If you're dealing on depression versus on depression, if you're dealing with insecurity versus on in insecurity, begin just to meditate and just reread those verses until it becomes a part of you and then like your 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 whole being is just transformed so that's what i had to do and don't be afraid just mm -hmm. to go to google like don't think you have to read just a random chapter and find a new chapter every day and just go like if you're dealing with something look it up and take it like medicine yeah because that's what the bible is this this little book it was like four dollars from i think hobby lobby but i think it's like seven dollars on amazon um i'll link it as well but this is like a really cool tool i just had it because while we were 
prepping for this episode, I used it because I wanted some quick verses. This is called God's Promises, and I think every household should get it. In the index, it literally has like what the Bible says about um, serving God, obedience, um, things about like forgiving others, um, marriage, divorce, like all these different topics. And you know, you go to the index, you flip to it, and then it has like several verses about that topic. So it, you can Google, but then like having like a tool like this, I think is really cool and like, yeah. life giving because um, I think a lot of times are like, okay, well, I want to get, go to God, but like, how do I even do that? Yeah. So obviously Google does help, um, but I think something like this is really cool. So you don't get like confused and yeah. like, it's like $4. So everyone should get one. And that's why it's like important to just renew your mind daily, because if yeah. you're not going through anything right now, that's why we're renewing our words to one, keep us from going through stuff. Yeah. And then when something does try to attack, your mind is already renewed that you're like, uh-uh, saying like, yeah. I already know the truth. Yeah. And there's this quote I heard, the more you practice in peace, the less you sweat and slash bleed in battle. And what that means is like during the peaceful times of your life, yeah. as you get in the word and you just like study the word and it's peaceful now, when those attacks come, you won't be as sweaty. You won't be as bleedy. You won't come out as like rugged and defeated because you were prepared yeah. and you were already ready. Yeah. Um, and Proverbs 4, 23, it says, above all else, guard your heart mm -hmm. for everything you do flows from it. So it's telling us to guard our heart, mm -hmm. guard our mind, because everything we do in life flows from it. So take a look at your life. Like, what are you doing? Are you making decisions based on fear all the time because you're just scared? And so now you won't do what God called you to do because that fear is overcoming you or whatever the case may be. That's why we renew our minds because out of our hearts is the issues of life. Like mm -hmm. your life can show you what you've been thinking about, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something else I feel like that's really, really important is um, back in Second Corinthians 10, um, where it says like, taking that thought captive. It reminded me of this visual that you were talking about um, the other night before we went to bed um, about like a hunt, the hunter. Oh yeah. I feel like that's really, really good. Do like, you I'm want not, me to say it or yeah, do you want to say like, it? I'm not a hunter and that's like gory. And I don't, I don't know if you guys have seen the show alone, but basically <laughs> it's the show that Tony makes me watch of these people who go on this show and a plane basically drops them off in the middle of nowhere and they have to survive with like only 10 items they can bring from their house. So like, you know, they have no food, shelter, nothing, and they yeah. have to do it themselves. But one of the things that they all do is have to hunt animals to survive, and, survive yeah. and they set up a lot of traps uh -huh. so well it was also going off of psalms 91 where it says like the lord delivers us from the fowler's snare and yeah. so like this it goes hand in hand with both of this so yeah. it's basically saying how like you have these hunters who strategically go way up into the mountaintops or into these like little sneaky places because they've studied and strategically are placing these traps for you know these animals that they want to hunt and capture and that's exactly what the enemy does. Mm -hmm. he, strat he studies our life. Not only that, he's been here way longer than we have. So he already knows what works and what doesn't. And he tries it on us. But he strategically are placing these traps. And he's strategically studying us on how can I get him trapped here and here and here. But first off, it says that the Lord delivers us from that. And that's the importance of the word. Because the Holy Spirit wants to lead us away from those traps. And th the Bible says that the Lord sends his angels and concerning us to protect us from those traps. And, but that's, that's his plan is like to take capture our thoughts and have a stronghold in our mind. That's his plan. Mm -hmm. But when we renew our minds in the word, we demolish those strongholds and those traps can no longer keep us bound because we know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and then... How I was saying, you know, take the take the word like medicine. If you go to Proverbs 3, 1 through 2, it's telling us, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, which is another way to say keep the word in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Mm -hmm. The importance of renewing your mind right there. It brings you peace and prosperity when we just renew our minds to the word of God. Yeah. And to, to encourage you more, like the enemy does have tricks. He does have tactics, but they're very, very like repetitive. Oh, yeah. And once you kind of know like where he likes to mess with people and that is in the mind, mm -hmm. um, it's, 
it's easier to combat those things yeah. because you know. I mean, when you hear a lie and you know it's something that is not of the word of God and not something that the Lord has put on your heart and it's something that's just making you feel so fearful, then you know it's from the enemy. And if anything, to let it encourage you in a way because it's like he is trying really hard because he knows this is a lie. And so like if this is a lie, then what God has for me on the other side is going to be so much better. Yep. So just like shut him down now. Like, I mean, sometimes um, I saw this TikTok video of actually of like Ashley Harrington, um, YouTuber, influencer girl. And some girl posted a video of her. They were having like a Bible study and this weird like knocking happened on the door and everyone was like freaking out and it was not a person. Like, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But anyways, everyone was like really scared and like giving into fear. And she stood up and she said, "Uh, uh-uh, whatever that is, I bind you in the name of Jesus and like get out of here. Go back to hell. Scary noise or whatever. Like you're not messing up our Bible study. Yeah. And I was like, yes, like that is what we need to do as believers. Like whatever that thing, we can, the confidence, the boldness of like, no, the, the enemy is a punk. He is defeated. A, he's defeated. He's a weasel. He's nothing just like annoying little voice in our ear. And it's so easy to like jump into fear. Um, but when you know, like Ashley, I mean, she'd applied it immediately. Yeah. Um, she did not entertain it yeah. at all. And that's how we need to be as, be as believers. And I thought that was really cool as like a visual to see it applied. Yeah. Um, she just jumped up. She sent it back to hell, whatever it was. <laughs> and they moved on and went back to their Bible study. Yeah. So like, that's exactly what it means word, to look like as believers. Yeah, that's what the word does. Gives you confidence, mm-hmm. gives you peace, knows like the enemy you're defeated. The Bible even says, and I don't have that verse on hand, but like when we, in the end, when, mm-hmm. you know, we're back with Christ and we're in, like, when we see how small the devil is, yeah. we are going to cry because we gave him so much like foothold in our life Mm -hmm. so just thinking about that just like wow that's just how powerless he is and and us talking about this reminded me of first peter 5 8 and it says to be alert and of sober mind so right there yeah it talks about the mind be sober minded because your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour Mm -hmm. right there it says that the enemy is prowling prowl prowling like a roaring lion. So first off, it says that he's like a lion. He's just masquerading and looking like a lion and sounding like a lion, but he has all bark and no bite. But right there, it's just showing us that like the enemy is just going to torment us or, or try to torment us and bark at us and mm-hmm. gr- roar at us and try to get us to believe, you know, what he's saying. But it tells us to have a be alert and have a sober mind. So right there, it's just like clarifying the fact that like the enemy just like works trying to get yeah. strongholds and captivate us in our thoughts yeah. and in our minds. And to reiterate that, like he has no new tricks as literally in nine, it says, resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family believers throughout the world are <laughs> undergoing the same kind of suffering yep. um, because he has literally no new tricks. So when we grasp that and we understand the power of renewing our mind through the word of God, I mean, it, it's much easier to overcome battles or just even like you won't even go through battles as much because you know how to combat it. Yeah. Um, and then even even in 10, it says um, to encourage is, and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you because we need to be restored after these things that have happened yeah. and um, make you strong, firm, and steadfast to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. So not only if you're feeling like tormented with your thoughts right now, like it's ending today because we're putting the word of God, um, we're renewing our mind and just putting it into our daily life. Yep. But now I'm believing that he's going to restore you. He is going to make you strong from what you had endured. And he's going to make you firm and steadfast because it says it right Gosh. here in the word of God. So like, yeah. you don't have to live defeated. We're going to apply it to our lives and apply this now too, that this is not how my life will be um, for months and months and months. Yes. It's ending right now. It can end any single time uh-huh. when you apply it to your life. Yep. And I mean, I, you just saying that like going through the fear and anxiety for like those two or three years and taking what we're saying and applying it to my life, mm-hmm. the restoration that the Lord brought is in, like, it's just crazy. Like the Bible tells us that the enemy has to return. When the enemy is caught, he has to return sevenfold what he stole mm-hmm. and the time and the joy time. and the peace yeah. and the friendships and, and the schooling that I missed because of the fear and anxiety has been restored more than I could ever like imagine. Almost like, like, do you, you remember it, but it's not something that you think of all the time because oh my of gosh. the restoration that has happened. Yeah. And sometimes I almost feel bad. Cause I'm like, 
I almost like forget what that time of my life was like. And I'm like, man, I want, not that I want to like remember that, but like, I want to like use that testimony and help people going through that. But because I feel so, and I am so free, it's like, I forget that I went through that. It's like good and bad at the same time. It is. Yeah. It's good for you, but like we need to help others. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, this is the power of the word is incredible. Yeah. Cause he, he will completely like, like you said, just restore you. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, the Lord, the thing is, about time. I think that's so cool because you feel like, oh, well, I just lost. I mean, if you guys didn't know Tony's testimony, I think it was like one and a half, two years of being confined least, to your yeah. house because of fear and anxiety of like literally exiting his house, even making like going a walk around his house. He was just so like bound by fear. Um, the Lord has restored that. So it's like, oh, two years wasted. Okay. But you've had so much more oh because yeah. of choosing Jesus and applying it, um, the word of God to your life. And now your life has been restored. Yeah. And even like me dropping out of high school because of it, we have a successful business. Yeah. And like, I feel like the Lord restored to me any knowledge or education I lost in mm-hmm. school. Like, I feel so, like I didn't miss anything. Yeah. And it's just like, the so don't be like sulking in your thoughts of like, oh, well, I've been dealing with these, this for so long. Well, the Lord restores time oh my gosh, yes. and restore your heart. And it's he, so much he better. can change it literally just by like you sitting on your couch right now, uh-huh. listening to this. Like you don't need a big, crazy worship service or whatever. Like all those things are good. And the Lord definitely can moves use through it, that, yeah. but he can also heal and restore you right now. Right like in are. this moment. That's the, yeah, that's the power of the word. And Joshua one nine says, um, where is that nine? Where are you? Okay. Uh, actually, sorry, Joshua one eight. And it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And then you will be prosperous and successful. So it's just another confirmation of like, getting into the word, meditating on it, letting it transform you. And as you do so, then you'll be successful in all that you do. You'll be mm-hmm. prosperous. And not even, not even just talking about like wealth, like obviously that comes, but like prosperous in your mind and your peace yeah. and, and, and your spirit and the knowledge. It's just like everything just changes because yeah. the Bible says that the God's word will not return to him void. So the promises in the Bible will not return to God void, but how does the word get returned to him? By us, we have to get into the word, believe it and speak it. And as we speak it, it will not return to him void and it transforms us. Mm -hmm. So the word is truth and it will do what it was sent to do. Absolutely. And I feel like that feeds into the third episode, which that's why I feel like we need to wrap it up. Yeah. And that is the power of your words. Yes. And that is so good. Oh man, I wish we could talk about it right now, but we need to wait for the third episode. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, uh, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Um, Thank you guys so much for listening and we will see you in the third episode next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.